Uh, hey, folks, welcome back to the program. We've got uh, Washington County Justice of the Peace, Patrick Deacons, back with us. Patrick, how are you this morning? I'm great, Paul. What about yourself, sir? Doing good. Hey, I'm, get, I'm getting ready for Christmas like everybody else and uh, getting excited about it. Um, got some last-minute uh, Christmas shopping that's still to do. What about you? Same here, Paul. How old's your daughter now, Paul? Because I know she's just now... My son's three, and he's just now getting into the whole Santa thing, and so it's really, really fun this year. Yeah, she is two and five months, two, two, two years, five months old, something like that, two, maybe six months. Um, so, yeah, six, more. I think more like six months. Yeah, she's, uh, man, she's into everything and uh, is just plotting to take over the world uh, like, a, like, a, like a maniacal genius. That's what I would say. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Yeah. Um, no, she's, she's awesome. Um, and we're, that's, that, that's the other thing with this Christmas season. Uh, and I'm sure you're experiencing that too. Like it's, uh, it's like everything becomes new for the parents because your children are experiencing all the stuff you got to experience for the first time. So it's pretty magical stuff. It really is. Absolutely. For sure. Um, all right. So I've got this Tom Sissom article back, uh, from last week, December 14th headline, Washington County group seeks solution to jail crowding. This is an issue we've had you on many times to talk about. This specific issue, Patrick, though, uh, or specific article, talks about the sheriff of Washington County, uh, Tim Helder, who I believe has been on the program uh, at least once before. Uh, he says he's wanting to work with a, a group uh, studying crowding at detention centers to focus on ideas to immediately reduce the jail population. I wanted to know what you thought about this idea, and uh, also, do you think it will involve tax increases? Well, that working group right now he established is uh, has been meeting for several months now. Uh, and it's a it's a group of community uh, participants. So it has both chiefs of police from around north uh, from Washington County, and then also some citizens, concerned citizens on it. So um, I, I'm excited for anybody to get together and talk about the jail overcrowding because I think it's, the more we talk about it, the more the solutions are going to come out of that that type of environment, um, especially he, I'm, I appreciate that he's let citizens be a part of it because I think that their voice is very important on this. Um, you know, I, I think any the solution that we've seen from the sheriff so far is a tax increase. It is doubling the size of the jail. So until we move away from that, I, you know, I don't think that's going anywhere with quorum court. So until we move away from that kind of a solution, uh, we're kind of we're kind of stuck in limbo. Now, the great news also is I think there's a lot of people working independently to also find solutions outside of that group. So there's a there's consensus forming, and that's what I want the people of Washington County to know. And then also your listeners around the state, you know, if their county is experiencing this th same issue, I want them to know that there's resources out there and there's other counties going through it, and we can all do it together, and it doesn't have to be each county kind of reinventing the wheel, you know, um, if you will. Yeah, and I think it's a big deal that there is significant opposition to just trying to solve this overcrowding problem by asking the people for more money. Um, the people already pay uh, governments locally a lot of money to do these types of things. Uh, and I think oftentimes governments grow in other places that the people that are, that are not nearly as beneficial for all the citizens. It is beneficial for there to be a jail and there to be a law law enforcement and things like that. But, uh, you know, coming back to the people and asking for money, is just old. That's, that's what, that's what we've been doing for a long time. And it, we're taxed enough. We've, we, we already give the government way too much money, Patrick. Absolutely. Well, if you think about the County, especially their tax base, Paul, and I hope the listeners understand that the County gets its taxes from property taxes and sales taxes primarily. Those taxes automatically grow as your population grows and the underlying property values grow of the county. So there's kind of a built-in increase, if you will, as more people move in, more people develop the land, more people pay taxes. So if, if we're having to continually go back to the people and ask them for more money, there's something unsustainable about what we're doing on the spending side. And I don't think it takes very long for you to scratch the surface of this budget and understand that there's a lot of areas that we could improve here. Um, and, and like you see probably around the state and, and at the state level, what happens is they spend and waste money poorly on things that are not beneficial for the county. But then when important things come up, 
they have the ability to try to go sell that tax increase because we absolutely need this or it's a critical need or, you know, I mean, if you don't support it, then you don't back our first responders or, you know, they pull out the pain point politics. And so they 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 waste the money on the bad spending. And then when it comes up to something that people might actually support the spending for, that's the one they're going to sell the tax increase on. <laughs> That's exactly right. So you're so what you're saying is uh, they've diverted funds that if if they put those funds up for a vote, I don't know. Let's say it's to uh, expand a, a library. Is that something that Washington County's done recently? Like they they I, it's been described to me as a Taj Mahal recently to like make the library bigger well, or something. The library the county does support a county library system, but fortunately we have Fayetteville leading the way on building that. Okay, uh, okay, okay. Well, let, let's 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 say for the sake of argument that it was the county funding this. Okay, if you put that to a vote, and you made people decide, you know, do you want a giant library? Do you want whatever, or do you want adequate jail space so we can take care of criminals? Most people are going to say, if you give them a choice between the two, fund the jail and and let's not fund these extra amenities. Um, but you're saying they're not ever going to let that happen. They're going to go ahead and spend the money on the extra amenities, and then they're going to be able to tell you, we've got to raise your taxes, be and if you don't support this, then you don't support the police or you don't support uh, you know, adequate jail space. Correct. And so there's a horrible quote from the movie Shawshank Redemption, and I don't know if you remember this, and I'm probably kind of paraphrasing it, but there's a scene in that where the warden said there's only one good way to spend the taxpayer's money, and that's more walls, more bars, and more guards. And that quote has really stuck out to me lately with these problems that we're seeing in overcrowding because I think if you look at the overcrowding issue globally, there's not a lot of wisdom in that in today's world, Paul. And this is where, you know, I think conservatives are having to kind of reinvent themselves in terms of what they believe, you know, I mean, for historically – and not necessarily what we believe, but what we're communicating to the outside world of people who, the, the, the voters and the taxpayers. I think that 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 quote was probably a good way to describe a, a lot of Republicans and conservatives before. But now we're seeing these issues in our jails, and it's not that's not the solution. And the one thing that I, I keep, I know I keep talking about, Paul, but I want your listeners to think about if how many people they know that are affected by some sort of drug addiction or mental health issue problems. And I think we can all trace that back to our minds, and we know somebody either personally in our family or that's a friend or, or we know friends of friends that have that issue. And, and now we, we understand, do we want to keep building jails and populating those jails with those individuals, or do we want to try to break the cycle uh, of continuing to incarcerate those individuals and basically perpetuating a problem and try to get solutions somewhere else and get those people plugged into some resources that could help them out and not be in the in the jail system. And, and that's kind of the context of this whole problem that, that we've been faced with in Washington County. Hmm. Yeah, no, and I, I totally um, understand what you're, what you're saying, is especially about the, the kind of the shift in mindset and what it means to be uh, a, a conservative on on this particular issue now? How how there there does seem to be kind of a a sea change or the winds are shifting uh, on that um, because mental health is something that you're hearing more and more about. Uh, and, and matter of fact, in that I don't know if you saw that Dave Chappelle stand up, but he he made a a joke uh, where he equated this uh, this heroin epidemic that we're having. Matter of fact. Uh, he equated it with the eighties, uh, uh, the '80s crack epidemic, and, and made a joke about it. Whites versus blacks. It was it was actually a really funny joke. But matter of fact, I think Patrick, the first um, the, the first story that I read in Arkansas about a heroin epidemic was uh, one having to do with Washington County specifically. This was a couple of years ago, but it actually had to do with the fact that because everybody's addicted to opioids, and I say everybody un understanding that's not literal. Uh, but they cracked down on prescribing opioids because of so many people were addicted to it. So instead of go getting the synthetic heroin fix, they went to the real stuff again. And over here in my neck of the woods, I've got people that tell me anonymously that that's why you have such a hepatitis outbreak because you have sharing of needles again. So we, we do have a we do have a problem on our hands and an, an, an addiction problem is a is, is a real issue that, you know, Maybe there are other ways to, to treat it. 
Correct. And, and, and I go back to, I think, it, Paul, the easy solution is to raise taxes and build the jail. Yes. That's easy. And it's easy to do as a justice of the peace. It's easy to do as society because it doesn't take rolling up your sleeves and getting involved in the issue. You know, sometimes I, I chuckle to myself before I go to bed at night and think, man, how much easier would this be? I, it wouldn't have been the right thing to do, but it would have been easier on everybody just to pass a tax onto the people. And that's the scary part about government. It's easy to spend other people's money to find the easy way out. Mm. But, no, we need to work harder. We need to take this this uh, this issue and, and fully vet it out. Now, I mean, I go to the jail and I tour it, and you can see people there. And, and, and even the detention officers can tell you there are people in this jail that don't belong here because they suffer from some mental health issue or something like that, that I keep going back to. But the justice system and those people in that jail are doing all that they can do. There is no other solution right now. We need to make sure that we partner with our criminal justice system to make sure that we have solutions outside of just housing those people and incarcerating them. And, and I'm excited to say I've done a lot of research. I've talked to other people around the state. There are programs out there that are ready to be put right into Washington County we are very lucky and fortunate because we have a great population here that, that's willing and ready to go down to the jail and volunteer, try to implement some of these programs uh, to give these people some alternatives from just keep going back to jail. So, you know, there is some there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Now it's just getting everyone coordinated and getting everyone to work towards that one goal. Mm. Man, I respect you so much, Patrick, and I appreciate the work that you're doing and, and what a thoughtful you know, careful approach that you're taking with the power that the people have given you as a justice of the peace. And I think, I hope everybody's listening. If you're a politician, I, I hope everybody's taking notes. So Patrick, I appreciate you coming on and Merry Christmas to you, sir. Thank you, Paul. Um, Merry Christmas to you and your family and to all the listeners out there. I wish everybody the best. All righty. Thanks, Patrick. It's always great to talk to you, sir. Folks, the telephone number 870-275-9799.